C179, Business of IT Applications. Let's talk about it. Dear me, three to six months. Watch how I make you proud. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier, where I share my journey in tech, both on the career side and on the education and learning side. I am a recent WGU graduate. I obtained my degree in IT management and with the help of my enrollment counselor and my program mentor, as well as just my desire to be done with school as quick as possible, I was actually able to accelerate through the program and I started officially on November 1st and I completed my last class on February 16th, 2023. In today's video, we're going to talk about the business of IT applications course. We'll talk about what the course requirements are, what is the business of IT applications, why is that relevant to IT, and lastly, how to pass the course. Okay, so what is business of IT applications? In short, essentially what you're doing is you're offering a solution and pitching how a solution will be delivered to maybe a unit within your organization. So a really good example is human resources. So you have benefits, you have payroll, you have even things like learning and development. These are all kind of components of an HR department and as much help as they can get creating like a centralized software or database or something that can help them manage their department. That's what they're going to be looking for. You have to be able to understand Number one, what the problem is for the department, because this is your new customer. And you also need to understand the impact that your solution is going to have. You need to be have ways to remediate problems or have contingency plans. How are you going to get people to get on board with this process? Are you going to be available to train? And a lot of times, too, as someone who's creating the application itself, from a support end, you might not be the primary support. So you might be the person who owns the product. You may be the person that drafts up guides and things like that for the support teams. But in terms of questions that come in, those might go to like service desk or help desk. So you have to also think about how can I ensure that I am equipping that team with all they need to know so that every single issue is in triage to me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and dive into the dashboard or homepage of the course and take a look to see what is in there. Okay, so we'll just go over the homepage here so you can see the course start date is an overview and it says this course introduces IT students to information systems. The course includes important topics related to the management of information systems, such as development and business continuity. And that's a really important piece here is everyone in alignment with what the request is and moreover, are they in alignment with the subsequent outcomes? Is everyone on the same page? They have a list of competencies here. Uh, you have the course planning tool. They have some materials, which for today, for today's video, I won't be able to explore them, but we will be able to look at the resource page. Here's the performance assessment. And then you have the instructor tab, announcements, course tips, course search, course chatter. And oh, by the way, you can give feedback on this course if you're having any problems or if you're just like, hey, I really love the course. Let's look at the course resource page and that way we can get a better idea of what it is we need to do in order to be successful. Okay, so here I am at the course resource page. This is one of those other courses that utilize SharePoint site. So SharePoint is really cool. You can search the site for specific tools or resources, but here we have quite a few areas. So they have the welcome video, study guide, PowerPoint recordings, and then learning resources. So actually looking closer at the resource materials, a lot of the resource materials really give away important information that I can't really dive too deep in. But what I will say is this, we'll talk about some things you need to be aware of and think about. And if, especially if you have former IT experience, these are things that may have come up for you on projects that you may have worked on or contributed to. So, the first thing you want to think about is what are some ways to leverage technology? So for example, let's say that uh, an organization wanted to start some kind of 
LMS, like a learning environment for staff. If you're in Microsoft Office, for example, there is an application called Microsoft Stream and Microsoft Stream allows you to create videos in a similar way to YouTube. You can timestamp things, you can create descriptions, you can link out to other areas when someone accesses the video. You can enable commenting, restrict it. You can create a playlist. There's all kinds of cool features that you can do with Stream. And that's number one. If someone wanted to utilize something, sometimes the best approach is to utilize what you have already and educate people on how to leverage it for whatever their purposes are. So maybe you have a developer team that can work with you to make it more custom, can bring in maybe some Java or some other kind of coded language to enhance the the actual site. But nonetheless, it's it's about leveraging technology and kind of starting where you are. The next thing that you want to think about with this course is business process management. You want to think about meetings and engagement and working with key sponsors and stakeholders like you want to get a good grasp of that because working in an IT department is not just about creating the tech. It's about, again, making sure that the tech meets the needs of the customer. And in this instance, the customer or rather the stakeholder is a department and then their customers are going to be dependent on them. Next thing is change management. So how well are you updating everyone with regards to different changes on the platform or on the software? Who's part of that? How are things approved? How far up the chain does it go? And then change can also be like there's standard changes and then there's like really broad changes. So change management is something that you're definitely going to have to explore. And fortunately, the WGU text kind of gives a lot of context around it. So I would definitely check the materials they provide. Next up, you would think about everyone's responsibilities. So who are the key contributors to the process? How are they contributing? You want to think about how you're going to develop this thing. So there's different methods for development. One of the more popular ones is like agile and allows people to be flexible, allows teams to be flexible and make changes on the fly. A lot of times too, when you're working with a customer, they can see one, they may have in mind one thing. And as you're explaining the benefits and features, new ideas spark. And at what point do you say, okay, hold on. I know you have a new idea or I know you have a new plan, but we need to keep this process going. Or do you have a development process that allows you to say, okay, we can incorporate that. We'll make this change. We'll update you. We'll let you test it, those kind of things. Oh, milestones. So what are the different milestones that you want to reach? A lot of times from a technical development standpoint, you have a milestone that you want to reach which basically turns certain features on and off. But then the stakeholders may have completely different sets of milestones. And those are things that are going to have to be addressed as well. And basically those milestones tell you that once we got into this step, we no longer had to return back to it or we have, you know, met or exceeded the, the needs of the customer, so to speak, and met or exceeded the time frame that it took us to complete a specific activity. Beyond that, a lot of this has to deal with just what happens when things go wrong. So you have two kind of categories, right? You have the threat side of things, and then you have the problem or incident management side of things. So for threats, you want to think about what could be some internal threats, what could be some external threats. And these are more like along the lines of security. And then once you've acknowledged who those threat actors are, what is your plan to protect the system? And let's say that you did everything you could to protect the system. What's your contingency plan if things go wrong? So those are also things to think about. And then lastly, on the problem management and incident management side, hey, when issues get reported, who's tracking those issues? How do they get triaged? What are some things that can be done to help troubleshoot the problem? And then if you get too many of these same incidents, let's say everyone is getting this error message when they click on their employee ID number. And it's happening every time you test it. You know, it's happening on Google Chrome. It's happening on Brave. It's happening on Microsoft Edge. Everywhere where browsers are sold, <laughs> basically. So now, okay, how many incidents constitute a problem? And then when a problem happens, what is the process to address the problem, to get everyone back to a working state? So those are all things that you want to consider. There's not really like a page requirement that I remember, but it's just about 
utilizing the resources that you get in the study guide and using that to formulate your responses. Again, if you have tech experience, awesome. You can leverage that a whole lot and just think, okay, this scenario, how would this scenario look in an ideal situation in my organization? Number, number one. And number two, if you're new to it, just think about some of the things we talked about. And as a user, think about, okay, what would be the effects of things not going right? What could happen if, for example, HR had an issue with their system? Who's at risk? Do I have a driver's license on file? Do I have social security on file? So there's certain things you can think about. And you basically, you're managing each step. Now, the other thing I would recommend is if you're not anywhere near time to take this course, but you want to learn more about some of these components like change management, incident management, problem management, security management, those things you can find if you go on YouTube and look up like ITIL. So I-T-I-L, it's short for the Information Technology Infrastructure Library. The current version, I think, is four still, but that was the first certification I took. And that's what made me feel comfortable with this process. It's all about what's called a service value chain. So how do you deliver services in a really convenient way? Number one, and then all of the things you need to consider. There's guiding principles, there's various just management types, and I think over 35 different management types, but these are all things that help your organization run smoothly and they provide you, it's basically a framework. So it's like color inside the lines and you'll see the big picture at the end, all right? so. My apologies. I really wanted to show you a lot around this course, but again, I would have to basically just block out everything. And it'll be easier for me to talk and talk to you about it and talk you through some of the things you need to know. But this is a four unit course and there's no test you need to take. It's just a performance assessment. And I was able to get it submitted and completed the first time. Again, I did have some background knowledge, but I think if you use the text really well, this is one time I'll say read the text and look at the different articles that are provided as like case studies and things like that. I think you'll be good. And you can also reach out to the support team. They'll definitely support you and answer any questions you may have. All right. So thank you for watching this video. Good luck on the course. Let me know how you did in the comments below. And remember, school at various stages is going to be hard. It's just inevitable. But don't you also be hard on yourself? Just work hard on yourself. Just create the systems you need to check in with folks that can help you, different instructors, different contacts. If you know someone who's a change agent in your organization or who works in project management, that would be a great asset. They can help you think about some things as well. And really, this is just to give you the mindset you need so that you can step into these roles and you can have the, the best impact possible to deliver services quickly, but also meet the customer's needs. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Dear me, three to six months, watch how I make you proud.